actually have a trainer in the water with a whale that they're not supposed to be in the water with. He grabbed her ponytail and pulled her into the tank to her death. Rancho struggled to pull her ponytail free with both hands. The unpredictability of whale behavior. From the moment she set eyes on Shamu at SeaWorld, 10-year-old Dawn Brancho decided she wanted to work at SeaWorld. Three decades later, she was being dragged mercilessly by Tilikum, the orca, into his tank. What triggered the ruthless attack on Dawn still puzzles the expert, but for Brancho, it was an agonizing way to go as the 22-foot killer whale treated her like a piece of meat. He thrashed her against the side of the tank relentlessly, breaking her bones and mutilating her until he felt her body go limp in his mouth. Even then, he wouldn't allow others near her. Dawn was Tilikum's third victim. This was never what she bargained for. This is the tragic true story of Dawn Brancho, the Sea World trainer whose death changed everything. Dawn Brancho was one of the most popular and loved trainers at Sea World in Orlando. She was their poster child and always the star attraction at every show. Beside the marine animals, Dawn raked in millions for SeaWorld, and her performances with orcas were the main attraction. Her Shamu show with Tilikum especially became world famous. Tilikum was used to Dawn and even shared a good rapport with her. The giant killer whale had been a performing orca at SeaWorld for 18 years, two years longer than when Dawn worked there. They were partners and the oldest workers there too, yet strangely their partnership ended in one of the worst tragedies that shocked the country. Dawn was born and raised in Cedar Lake, Indiana. When she was 10, her family took her on vacation to Orlando. Seeing the performance of Shamu at SeaWorld mesmerized Dawn. It changed her life forever. The majestic beauty of the orcas created an obsession for her and animals. She just had to work with them. In one interview, Dawn was quoted as saying, I remember walking down the aisle at Shamu Stadium and telling my mom, this is what I want to do. It was her dream to do it, said Marion Laverde, Brancho's mother. She loved her job. Soon after graduating from the University of South Carolina in psychology and animal behavior, Dawn began volunteering in animal shelter. She loved animals and kept two Labradors, stray ducks, chickens, rabbits, and birds at home. Dawn's love for animals finally landed her a job working with dolphins at Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey. In 1994, Dawn finally found her dream job at SeaWorld in Orlando. Dawn's role in SeaWorld grew into an important one. To manage the intense rigors of working with killer orcas, Dawn ensured she was physically fit and active. She ran marathons, participated in cycling races, and even pumped iron. Dawn became a leader, taking charge of the famous Shamu shows in SeaWorld. Dawn breathed new life into the Shamu show and became featured on billboards across Orlando. Ever since the first original Shamu debuted in SeaWorld, Orca always took its place, becoming an heir to the most popular brand in animal entertainment. When Dawn joined SeaWorld, Tilikum was still a newcomer, brought to SeaWorld Orlando in 1992. Tilikum, a 22-foot monster killer whale, was always a rebel. Right from his capture off the coast of Iceland in 1983 until he was sent to SeaWorld in 1992, he was never truly broken in. Tilikum lived in Sealand for eight years. He was so notoriously disobedient that he would even get picked on by other whales for not behaving. When one orca displays disobedience, the entire pod at a marine park will go without food. The other orcas recognize how Tilikum was often the cause of their ill treatment and they often thrashed him. On more than one occasion, Tilikum was found badly injured by other orcas. Adding to his problems was the little tanks meant for orcas. This was a creature taken from his environment used to living in the vast expanse of an ocean, now made to exist in the solitary confines of a tin can. Tilikum was like a ticking time bomb waiting to explode, and was tragically in the presence of Don Brancho that he did. At SeaWorld, Tilikum's life was no different. Pacific Northwest whales, who regard him as an outsider, battered and bruised him. When Tilikum and Don met, the human and beast instantly developed a rapport. It was evident that Dawn was Tilikum's favorite human and they developed a close bond. Senior trainer John Hargrove remarked, he had a great relationship with her and she had a great relationship with him. 
I do believe that he loved her and I know that she loved him. On the sad day of February 24, 2010, Tillicum and Dawn were performing their famous Dining with Shamu show at SeaWorld. Beside an audience on the surface, hundreds were below witnessing the show through see-through glass in an open-air dining area. Everything was going as rehearsed. Dawn and Tillicum had done the show several times. It was all part of the job. Once they finished, Dawn laid on her stomach on the edge of the tank and began a nose-to-nose -nose routine with Tillicum. Her long ponytail floated in the water and struck Tillicum's nose. No one is sure if this triggered his rage, but at that moment, Tillicum dragged Dawn into the water. Tillicum was no stranger to killing. He had already killed two trainers in the past. In 1991, he killed a young, inexperienced trainer, Kelty Bird. In 1999, he killed 27-year-old trainer Daniel Dukes, who was so severely mutilated that there was not a single part of his body without injury. Even his genitals were bitten off. To get into the water with Tillicum and bond with him was extremely courageous of Dawn, but she eventually paid the price. The horror that unfolded at SeaWorld wasn't just caught on camera. Below the surface, hundreds of terrified tourists witnessed a horror movie come to life. People being served their cuisine felt too sick to touch their food as they saw Tillicum begin battering Dawn. The five foot four ton whale dragged her deeper and began drowning her. Witnesses said he would not allow her to rise to the surface. Each time she broke free and tried swimming up for air, he dragged her back down. Tillicum began violently shaking Dawn's body. At times, he grabbed and shook her by the arm. Sometimes, he shook her by the leg. One witness described how he even thrashed and shook her around by the head. As Dawn tried escaping, he battered her with his snout. At one point, just when Dawn thought she had a chance and scrambled with all her strength towards the surface, Tillicum swam straight into her like a battering ram, hitting her squarely in the chest. Even as Dawn went limp from the impact, Tillicum went around the pool and returned, swimming at full speed towards her with his mouth open. It was as if the whale was battering a victim, his prey. People were witnessing the live mutilation of Dawn as Tillicum snapped off her arm and began chewing on it. This was even scarier than any scene from Jaws because this was being played out in real life. It was not color in the water, but real blood. Dawn's blood that oozed in the mouth of Tillicum as he ate her arm. As if that wasn't enough, the whale chewed at her head and tore her scalp right off. People began screaming and yet no one could do anything. The cruel and merciless battering broke Dawn's jaw and one ear was seen dangling from her face. Her knees were broken. She could no longer move as her arms were fractured as well. Tillicum was a monster gone crazy. There were other smaller whales in the pool, but none participated in the bloody massacre. Meanwhile, the staff quickly swung into action, segregated the other whales into a neighboring pool, and attempted to save Dawn. Dawn was already dead. It was impossible to survive the battering she was receiving from Tillicum. Even as her body remained limp and lifeless, the whale was not done thrashing her around. Later, the coroner found that even Dawn's spinal cord had snapped and was severed in the attack. The entire staff at SeaWorld began slapping the water in hopes of intimidating Tillicum, who continued to thrash Dawn in his jaws. Paramedic Thomas Tobin rushed to the scene, but it was pointless. After 30 minutes, Tillicum was isolated in a special medical pool with a hydraulic base. Only then did trainers dive into the water to retrieve Dawn's body. One of the trainers found she had no scalp and dove back into the water only to find laying at the bottom of the pool. As Dawn was being removed from the water, Tillicum looked agitated and tried getting back at her. It seemed the beast just wanted to rip her to shreds. Dawn was placed next to another pool, covered in a black sheet. Witnesses report seeing Tillicum repeatedly approaching the surface, trying to lift himself above the pool wall. Experts still can't pinpoint what happened to Tillicum and what triggered such rage in the orca. Some feel he had mistaken Dawn's ponytail for a toy, but was that really the case? The incident involving Dawn Bracho prompted a documentary called Blackfish, Death at SeaWorld, where marine scientists attempted to analyze and explain the event. They felt that Tillicum was angered for not being rewarded after the show. The most logical and likely explanation was that Tillicum had snapped after 26 years of living in captivity, suffering beatings, and being traumatized by the confines of his captive environment. 
Do you agree that marine animals as large as Tilikum should never live in captivity and be trained for human entertainment? Was Don Brancho's merciless killing a disaster waiting to happen? We may never know, but remember, Don was the third victim of Tilikum. Check out the next video on screen to see some of the others 